In this video, we're going to prove the fundamental theorem of algebra. There are several proofs of this, but they are all based on the same idea. Here's one of them. Proof number one. We'll do it by contradiction. So assume that P never vanishes. We always know that P of Z goes to infinity when the modulus of Z goes to infinity. Therefore, we define F of Z as 1 over P of Z. Well, this is of course well defined since P never vanishes. We know that F of Z goes to 0 when the modulus of Z goes to infinity. Now we can apply the Cauchy Integral Formula. We know f of 0 is 1 over 2 pi i times the integral in some contour c of f of z divided by z dz, where c is any contour that contains 0. In particular, we can choose c to be the circle of radius r. Let's call that circle C sub R. We can use the parameterization R times e to the i theta. So this is 1 over 2 pi i times the integral from 0 to 2 pi of f of e to the, no, oh, sorry, r e to the i theta divided by r e to the i theta. Well, um, what's z? It's the derivative of z with, with respect to theta times d theta. So, i r e to the i theta d theta. We have i r e to the i theta d theta here. We can leave the i outside, so, so the i's cancel. And this cancel too, actually. We can bound this integral by 2 pi times the maximum of the modulus of f of r times e to the i theta. So 1 over 2 pi times 2 pi, well, they immediately cancel, times the maximum of the modulus of f of z where z is in c sub r. Now, of course, when we let r go to infinity, this goes to zero. So we conclude that f of zero is zero, which is a contradiction since one over any complex number is different from zero. Proof number two. For this, we will use Liouville's theorem. Defining f as before, we will prove first that 
Uh, it's bounded everywhere. Outside, it is bounded since it goes to zero at the infinity. So here it's bounded. And inside, it's also bounded since it's a continuous function. And, well, in the closure, it's bounded. Now, since it's analytic by the Arrhenius theorem, know that f of z is equal to c, where c is some fixed constant. There's a contradiction since c must be zero because f goes to zero when z goes to infinity, then f of z will be zero, which is a contradiction again. Now, this number three goes with the minimum modulus principle. Okay, these are the axes. And this is the origin. We know that there exists an R such that for all Z with the modulus of Z greater than R, the modulus of P of Z is greater than the modulus of P of 0. So if this is R, Outside this ball, the function, the modulus of p of z, is greater than the modulus of p of 0. Now, if you consider a contour that contains this ball, on a minimum modulus principle, we know that the minimum is attained at the boundary of the big contour. But this is a contradiction since m the modulus of P in this point, well it's a naught, we know that the modulus of P of Z naught is greater than the modulus of P of zero, which is a contradiction of course. We have yet another proof. These are my axes again. This is the origin. And before, we know that there exists an R such that inside the ball of center zero and radius R, the modulus of P of Z is greater than the modulus of P of 0 and well now inside it attains a minimum simple here but it's inside now we consider any contour that contains this ball we know that the, min the minimum is attained at the boundary of this contour, example here, but it is also attained inside. Well, actually, it can also be here, but it doesn't matter. But that means that P of Z is constant, which is, again, a contradiction, as before. Now, there is another proof that is with the maximum modulus principle.
if n is in n, we know there exists a z sub n in the boundary of the ball center zero and radius n such that for all z in the ball of center zero and radius n um, f we have modulus of f of z is less or equal than the modulus of f of z sub n. Now if we let n go to infinity, we know that f of z sub n modulus goes to zero. But this is the maximum of the function in these balls which are getting bigger and bigger when n go, goes to infinity so we conclude that f of z is zero for all z which is a contradiction